Hey gardening friends, I'm Jessie from Condo to Cottage. I'm super excited to bring you this week's full garden tour because so much has changed in the last week. It's just remarkable how different the garden looks to me and it might look to you. Um, this is one of the main reasons I, I do these gardening tours is because looking back from week to week is just very rewarding um, for the gardener um, and really reminds you why you're doing this and um, it's just a wonderful thing. So. Today's June 29th, and in the last week and a half, we did definitely have some some June, some like late June, early summer weather. Um, we had a lot of hot, hot days, including today. I'm out here trying to get the shade of my tomato plants here. Um, hey, everybody! Welcome. Hey, gardening friends! I'm Jesse from Condo to Cottage. I'm so excited you're here watching this uh, this tour today, the full garden tour. Super excited about this one because I feel like this is the first week that I can really see some major growth in the garden. Um, and it, it makes sense because today is June 29th. That's my grandma's birthday. So happy birthday, Graham. For the last week and a half, we've had that early summer uh, weather where it is hot and you get those pop-up thunderstorms occasionally in the afternoon. Um, and my garden is showing that. So. I live in um, New Jersey and we are in, um, you know, we get pretty humid in the summer. Nothing like down in the south in the United States, but it's definitely pretty, pretty humid. And um, I think that that humidity has really, you know, helped the plants. They love it, um, except for the, it can cause some, some disease in the tomatoes eventually. But in the, you know, early summer they just love that humidity and that heat oh man they're just growing like crazy my cucumbers are like amazing so we have had some success we did pull a few carrots out of the garden this week and a few beets uh for some really nice salads so i wanted to um you know share that because i've had some kind of not the best luck with my carrots and beets my root vegetables so far this year um but i did one variety of the carrots i'm going to show you which one it is but they really took off for, for some reason. Not really took off, they weren't very big, but enough uh, for a salad and really, really yummy. So um, also this week we had a lot of baby vegetables come out. So I'm gonna walk you guys around and show you the baby vegetables that I'm talking about. Um, but super exciting week here in the garden. So what is going on in your garden? Are you seeing those baby vegetables? Um, so many, I, I love so many of my friends um, and family send me messages and pictures of their gardens now. And it makes me so happy because we're all kind of in this learning together. Um, and you know, what, what's working for you? What varieties work for you? So what is your garden looking like right now? Just throw something down in the comments. I wanna hear, are you having baby tomatoes? Are you having baby zucchinis come out? Um, I know my brother-in-law, his zucchinis came out and then they kind of stalled for a little while. So they're kind of in this stalled pattern, which is not typical for zucchini. So are any of you experiencing that? We're, we're trying to figure out maybe why that's happening and, you know, just kind of brainstorming. So, so let's, uh, without further ado, let me show you what's going on here in the garden this week. All right. So I am going to walk around here in the sun. I'm going to make this as fast as I can. I'm trying to I, I like sitting in the shade of my trellis. I get the shade of the tomato plants. So kale here is still doing really well. None of them have bolted, which is really great. Um, and we, I mean, we just had a huge salad from this kale today and some of the lettuce. These tomatoes got knocked over and tousled quite a bit in some bad weather we had. Um, but they kind of, I did not trellis them. I'm, I'm gonna leave these ones alone. These are my volunteer ones that just kind of came up out of nowhere and I just left them in there. There's a tall one back there. Um, and they popped themselves right back up. So I'm just going to let them go, see what happens. We have blossoms, so that's good. New growth. Look at that beautiful new growth on there. It's beautiful colors. Um, so then below there, I have these beans. Now these beans, I would never think that I would have had to stake up, uh, these patty pan squashes, but I had to put two stakes in because they were, these leaves are just so massive as I've talked about before. Look, they're, they're Ted sized. Those are Ted sized zucchini leaves um, or uh, patty pan squash. And they were totally blocking out my, my beans here. So um, I had to kind of prop those up. Check out these beans though. You see these little beans? That is exciting. This is, I believe a blue lake bush bean. 
Um, so it'll be a green bean. And so I'm going to start looking into when is the best time to harvest beans. Um, so one of the channels that I absolutely love is Roots and Refuge Farm. And she just put out a video, I think last week, talking about when is the proper time to harvest all sorts of vegetables. I'll link it um, if I can in, a, in, in the um, comments. <clears throat> but really interesting that you want to harvest things like cucumbers and that have a lot of water in them, like zucchini. I would think she, I don't think she specifically said zucchini, but um, you'd want to harvest them in the morning before the sun is really hot because then the water content's gonna stay in there. So that cucumber, um, is gonna stay, you know, it's not gonna like get as um, as mushy, it's gonna retain its moisture. Um, then another thing that she said that really stuck with me is tomatoes, that you wanna harvest them in the afternoon or the evening after they've sat in the sun all day because the they are gonna lose some of their water content and it's gonna concentrate those sweet flavors. Um, so that was really interesting. I never thought about that, um, about it like that. I usually harvest my tomatoes when they're ready. Um, I usually come out in the morning and do it in the morning and then sometimes I'll go back out in the afternoon and the cherry tomatoes like ripen within a day. Um, so I never really thought about the fact that it's going to concentrate the flavor. So that was a really good point. I'm super appreciative to, to Jess for sharing that with us. I have to look into green beans though because I don't really know. I would assume you'd want to harvest them in the morning to keep that water content but I'll let you guys know when I find out um, before next week. All right, so those are the beans. And then as, as uh, you can see, the zucchini here, we've got lots of beautiful blossoms. They were opened up this morning, um, just gorgeous. And if I can kind of sneak in here into this jungle and show you what these baby squash are going to look like. See right here, those are little patty pan squash. This is a yellow scallop squash we're getting. Um, so they are going to have this like scalloped shape, which is super cool. Um, oh, here's one right there. Let's see if I can get the sun to block it. See, beautiful. Um, so those are going to be a nice yellow when we pick them. Um, this is another one right behind it. So that's cool. And if you, if you look, there's more rogue tomatoes, like literally in the middle of these patty pan squash. These, these tomatoes just would not quit. So yeah, okay, so then we have our cucumbers here. The kind of, the leaves kind of all blend in together. Those on the bottom are the zucchini or the patty pan squash, and then these are the cucumber leaves, but these cucumber leaves are a nice size too. Um, have some here uh, from the, the uh, Chicago pickling. So this is the one from inside, but man, these ones that grew up in the, that I planted after the frost, that after I lost some of the other ones, they are just killing it right here. They're loving this weather. Um, they're trellising. They're now, I mean, they, they filled in this trellis so much better than my cucumbers did last year. They were more sparse. So this is great. Um, and they're just every day I'm trellising, re, retraining. Um, so like here, you see this little coil. I just kind of come out here and remind it, hey, you've got some assistance here, buddy. All right. And just recoil them. But lots of cucumbers coming out. Um, and I actually have one that I have to look and see. This variety, I believe it's a market more if I can find it. Here it is. See this cucumber? So I want to see how big that variety should get. So I'm going to go look that up. But he snuck in there. I didn't even know he was down there for a while. And then all of a sudden, bam. Cucumbers tend to do that. It's like you don't even know they're there. Zucchini do that. The squash family. So something else super cool was over here, I had these allium, these onions that I planted. Remember, they were just from the garden. I'm sorry, from the pantry. They just kind of went and we were like, well, we might as well plant them and see what happens. It's just an experiment. And the flowers have started to pop open. So they formed these little bulbs. And then the flowers are literally like popping out of the case of that flower or that bulb. So it's really cool. And I'm gonna leave them because um, it's an allium flower and they're beautiful and the pollinators like them. We were out here this morning and there were some bumblebees flying around. Um, so super, uh, here's one. Look at those beautiful little flowers um, of the onion. And that's literally just a yellow Vidalia onion that we had in the pantry that just went, started uh, growing some sprouts out of the top. So very cool there. Excited about these little cucumbers. 
Lots of little babies all over the place. See the little babies? So, there's another cutie. Um, I did move, last week I talked about moving these eggplants. Now I did, they're currently looking kind of sad. But that's normal, I would say, for them to have some sort of shock after I just planted them, replanted them. So I'm just going to let them go, see how they do. Um, and it's almost like I was talking about last week, like a succession sowing, because by the time they recover and come back, my other plants would have already produced zucchini. So um, hopefully I'll get some a second round here, but <laughs> if I can get them to rejuvenate. They're definitely flea beetle damage, though. Man, look at that. Um, that is supposed to be a ground cherry, but I have never grown them before, so we're going to see. That's where I planted it, so we'll see what happens. Um, oh my god, this leaf is just huge. That is the largest squash variety I've ever seen. Um, so I also planted here some Swiss chard, right, down this little trough. So we'll see if those come up. Uh, I've got to do some watering tonight because those will last, those are a leafy green that will last through the summer. They don't mind the heat. Although I must say, this lettuce is still really good. Um, we picked some for lunch today. Um, so this lettuce is still surviving. I think because this whole part of the garden gets shade in the morning, I think that really is helping the, uh, the lettuce. That's a cold weather or cool weather crop. Um, and the beets and carrots. So these are beets, it's actually a pretty sizable one there in comparison, but we have picked some really nice beets from there, um, so that's been great. I think we've got uh, Early Wonder, and then the other variety is, um, what the heck is it, Detroit Red maybe, I want to say. Um, and then the carrots that we've had success with have been, well I think I might have lost my tag, so... Here, this one. Danvers 126. I'll put that on the screen. They were really good. And for me, having such trouble growing carrots, that seems like a good one for a beginner because I, I was actually able to grow little baby carrots with them. Um, but a lot of these carrots are going to seed. But that's a beautiful flower, like a Queen Anne's Lace type flower. Um, same, uh, same kind of family here. So I'm just going to let it go and get some more pollinators in here. Um, this row of tomatoes is looking good, very healthy. I think these are probably my healthier tomatoes. Um, no yellowing so far, knock on wood. These uh, kale over here are still being attacked by some cabbage worms. So I've been picking at them every day, trying to get rid of them, but as you can see in the grass, <laughs> I feed them to my chickens, but they don't eat all the kale. Um, these are my sugar snap peas, and they are growing. These are magnolia sugar snap peas tendr with, with these tendrils. Really cool. Um, check out all these ones. So again, I'm going to do some research and figure out when to pick these. But this one's got several. So this isn't a lot, but it's going to be mostly just like a, um, a little snack in the garden. I don't know if you guys just saw in the background, but Lulu just chased Jimmy. Oh boy, there's like a little issue going on. So these tomatoes here doing okay. They've got some leaf spotting. Um, so I'm going to see what's going on there. But they are got a lot of fruit. So very cool. Um, more kale, more lettuce. And then this is just another little flower. Really cute little flower this guy. Um, this is lemon balm down here being shaded. By, I might move the lettuce. I have the lettuce in the shade because it likes shade. Um, I might move it under this leaf. So this is another. Uh, this is another type of squash, and I have some. I don't know if I have flowers on this one yet. I can't recall if I had any this morning, but this one next to it has some. This is our Rondenise squash. Um, so or Ronde Denise keep saying that wrong. Uh, this tomato patch, these are tall, as tall as me now. So they're, you know, off the two foot bed. They're about three and a half feet tall. Maybe a little bit. This one might be taller, honestly. Um, had some damage during the storm, but the last weeks, but they're doing okay. They have a little bit of leaf curl here, you see, but not, not nothing crazy. Um, might just be they got a little bit of 
too much moisture over the last few days. Um, tomatoes don't necessarily, they like hot and dry. Uh, another squash here, Ronde Denise squash with a big baby down there. That's nice. That's going to be a really nice squash. I'm excited for these. And I think that these tomatoes, I started seeing, these should be Paul Robeson's and Creole's. Um, mixed in with my chamomile flowers here. And I think I saw some babies on here, but I'm not I'm missing them right now. So then these um, melons, I did clean up this trellis and moved the volunteer tomatoes. I moved them to over here because that way, once those sugar snap peas are done, I can use that trellis and leave some room here for these melons that are fighting for sun. They're just fighting their way. And we do have a little flower for the one of the melons. So these are either cantaloupe or kajari melons. I'm not sure which is which. Um, but they are getting direct sun, but probably not as much as they would like. So we'll see what we get with those. Um, this squash is just kind of blocking them a bit. I think I have some potatoes in here, but haven't really been doing much with them paying attention. Um, so yeah, tomatoes, we'll just keep trellising. Um, the eggplant, super exciting. I have little eggplant flowers, um, which is cool. So you do, I have a lot of ants on these. I just noticed earlier. So I'm going to have to see. I'm not really sure how I feel about that. More little blossoms on there. So that's exciting. Basil's looking good. Um, we topped some and had some recently. More eggplant. And my peppers. My peppers have babies. I'm a pepper grandma here. Look at, see we got flowers and we have little, little baby peppers. So, although what is that guy? Is that, oh, he flew away. That might have been a little bug that I don't like. So, peppers are looking okay. Got lots of little flowers and babies on there. So, I'm happy with that. Um, so I'm going to bring you around and show you some other parts here. The marigolds are doing well too. So marigolds are something to, to um, companion plant with tomatoes and other plants. Um, and they just took off. So they're starting to get some flowers in. They got a lot bigger over the last week. Check out these beautiful zinnias. These might be a key, um, key lime. I have to look. It might be, um, I think it's a key lime type. I just saw this little red tomato. Not yet, not yet ripe, but getting there. Um, so with pests, I did see something earlier that I wanted to show you. You guys see this little bug? Well, it's all cute, but it's actually a baby spotted lanternfly, which is super invasive. Here it is. Baby spotted lanternfly. So now let's see if the chickens like it. Ducky. Oh, I'm not trying to get you, girl. Here. Do you like spotted lanternfly? You're going to ignore me? Look. <laughs> Look. Where's my girls at? Flissa will eat just about anything. But maybe they don't. Maybe that's part of the invasiveness. Come here, Fliss. Where were you? I was trying to find you, girl. You want a spotted lantern fly? Here. See him? There you go. Did you eat him? Okay. Good. That's just a stick. Okay. That's the new invasive pest control, chickens. So yeah, spotted and lantern fly, not fun. Definitely not a good thing around here. So I'm not sure if what other what other areas what your invasive species are, but definitely not not fun. Um, so over here in the other trellis, we have some beans, some tomatoes that are definitely hurting. I mean, in comparison, these tomatoes versus those tomatoes is just insane. Um, so I think these guys are in desperate need of some fertilizer. So I'm going to do that tonight. You shouldn't fertilize during the day. It can kind of scorch them. Um, look at the little tomato though. 
don't know if you guys can see this little baby. How exciting. Um, so same thing over here. Do have some sugar snap peas coming up. Sorry for the focus issues. And then in here, I have some potatoes that we planted and we're actually getting some potatoes. So not many, only three potato plants so far, but I might water them and see what else we get. And a marigold transplanted itself amongst my, I think those are sweet alyssum. Um, so that's cool. So the more marigolds, the merrier in my opinion. And then over here, we just have the other tomatoes that are also just kind of um, hanging out back here. So they're looking good. So everything's uh, everything's looking great. Lots of baby fruits, well, vegetables, um, lots of flowers, lots of pollinators. Super excited to start harvesting some more things. Um, usually happens that the biggest harvest is like when we're away on vacation, which is like the first week, first two weeks of August. So I'm hoping that the last weeks of July we'll get a lot of tomatoes so that we can uh, start start enjoying those and maybe doing some canning and freezing. We haven't done any canning um, last year. We didn't do any. So Lulu, don't go near that. Having dogs and chickens is just rough. Um, but I'm sure you can relate. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can get some, some vegetables in before, before we go on vacation. All right guys. So if you haven't liked or subscribed, um, you know, I do these garden tours every Monday. You can keep up. I would love to hear what's going on in your garden this week. What kind of stuff you got going on? The good, the bad, the ugly. I got plenty of bad going on in there with those bugs and the kale, but it's okay. I'd love to hear what's going on with you. So just, uh, put something in the comments like and subscribe and I will see you guys later this week. Have a great day.